We're now going to look at the regioselectivity of the radical halogenation. And when you hear the term regioselectivity for a reaction, that's basically saying the reaction is taking place and what region of the molecule does the new group add to. So in this case, we're adding a chlorine or bromine, and we're trying to figure out where in this molecule does the new halogen end up. So let's keep it generic to start, and I'm using X2, meaning it could be either halogen. And in this molecule, we have two distinct types of hydrogen. We have the methyl group, which is equivalent to this methyl group, and we have the CH2 group. So we have two possible products for this. Let's say we halogenate at this carbon, then we get this product here. Or if we halogenate at the CH2 carbon, we get this product. So now if we think about this in terms of the halogen that we're using, let's compare chlorine and bromine. If you use chlorine, you end up getting a mixture of products. If you use bromine as your halogen, the product on the right is the major product. The product on the left is a minor product. So what this tells us is that the chlorination is non-selective. It gives us a mixture of products. The bromination is selective to get the halogen on the more substituted carbon. Here we end up with a primary halide. Here is a secondary halide. So we next want to ask ourselves why this is. Why do we have this particular outcome? Well, if you think back to the previous section where we looked at the thermodynamics of these reactions, we saw that the chlorination was exothermic by negative 25 kcals per mole. Versus the bromination, it was exothermic, but by a much smaller value. It was negative 7.9. This leads us to what's known as the reactivity selectivity principle. Something that is more reactive, i.e. the chlorination, is going to be less selective. Something that is less reactive, the bromination, will be more selective. So the way we can think about this, the bromination is slower and it's less exothermic, making it more selective. And although um, you know this being exothermic really doesn't tell us anything about the rate, the bromination is slower than the chlorination. So a way I like to think about this is if you were to go into a grocery store and if you're going really really fast and just grabbing things off the shelves you can't be very selective for what you're getting. Uh, you can't check the prices, you can't make sure your cans don't have dents and things like that. Versus if you slow down, like the bromination, then you can be more selective for what you're picking up off the shelves. So it's really the same thing with a reaction. So we know that the bromination is more selective, but now let's try to think about why it's more selective for getting the halogen on the secondary carbon versus the primary carbon, or basically why is it more selective for the more substituted carbon? Well, to do that, we want to analyze the mechanism, specifically the propagation step. So here we're comparing the propagation step for both hydrogen in this molecule. And the first step in the propagation is a hydrogen atom abstraction, where the bromine radical will come and take a hydrogen atom and its electron, and the other electron will go into the carbon. So the product for this first one is the radical and HBr. 
For the second one, it's going to be the same thing, just a different hydrogen. Here's the bromine, the hydrogen atom, and the radical going to the carbon. We've talked about radical stability. As you look at these, you should immediately spot the primary radical versus the secondary radical. And we know the secondary is more stable. This is a lower energy pathway, so it's the favored pathway for the reaction. This will then react with Br2. This electron will take one of the bromine atoms. Here's the product. Plus, we get a bromine radical that will continue the propagation. So this is the favored pathway. Let's put this outcome on an energy diagram. So in terms of the starting material and product, there's really not much difference energy-wise. So the starting material, we're dealing with the same molecule in either case. With the product, the primary bromide and the secondary bromide, there's really not much difference energy-wise. So there's either product. The big difference is in the intermediate. Here we'll put our secondary radical. The primary radical will be higher in energy. So then, if you think about this first step of the reaction, the starting material has to climb a hill over the transition state to get to this intermediate. There would be the transition state for the secondary. The primary, that's going to be an even bigger hill to climb to get there. So that's why the secondary is a lower energy pathway, and that will lead to the product.